This conference will now be recorded. All right, so we'll be starting the presentation. So you all might, you know, you all might be hearing this word a lot nowadays. Machine learning, data science, machine learning. When you go to, you know, when you go to different blogs, you know, in news articles, you might see this word machine learning, machine learning. So you might be thinking what this word is basically. And we all are trying to, you know, understand this word. So let's try to understand it. I'll try my best to make you guys understand what this word is. So let's try to understand, first of all, how the development of a computer started. Everybody, please mute yourself. There is some noise that I'm getting. Hello. Hi, Nandesh. This is Yogendra. Very good morning to you. Yes, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You, sir. and good morning to all. So first of all, I would request all of you to mute your session. And uh, if Nandesh, if they are not muting, then you can mute all. OK, because otherwise, if you want to conduct this session in a fruitful way, then we have to, you know, uh, support each other. Nandesh, you can mute all. All right, sir. Yeah, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, so let's start the session now. I guess everybody is muted now, so we can start the session. Not audible? I think there is some issue on your side, Aman. Am I audible to everyone else? Yes, you are. Uh, Aman, I think you yes. have to disconnect it and then connect back again. Okay, so let's start the session now. Oh, hold on. So the development of how the let's try to understand first of all before uh, before jumping into data science and machine learning, what data science and machine learning is. Let's try to look at how the development of computers started. So in the early days when you know how the development it started it's like it's not to so it's not it's not to solve some sort of problem related to the real life or trying to discover how this earth was formed and trying to gather information related to life it was it was discovered just because some person thought let's call this guy this guy that we can see here let's call this guy to be bob so this guy wanted to 
you know he don't he don't want to spend more time you know on the fields in the in, you know in the in the summer he just want to sit at sit at his home and relax and want to do some tasks easily he just want to relax and do things automatically because i guess all the programmers they are very lazy and they want to do things you know that can you know make their life easier that's what they try to do that's what they try to achieve so the fundamental the fundamental goal was to you know build something that can ease their life that can do the that can uh, automate uh, they can automate something or they don't have to do the repetitive task because they get bored the programmer they get bored very easily when they do a repetitive task so first of all what comes is abacus uh, forget the picture uh, ignore this picture so the in abacus what we try to do we try to solve the math equation but for the uh, by so, by uh, using some of these numbers but for that we need to remember we need to memorize the time series but that was also tough for us so we thought of building something else then we come up with the idea to build a calculator of course there was a few steps involved in it and then we come up with the calculator which is uh, called as trans uh, no, transistor with a tape that we can use and then you can imagine the hype of the calculator at that time just uh, i have mean, i have uh, put the texas instrument logo in, in in front of the apple sign so you can imagine the hype of the calculator that it was having at that point of time then we were we we wanted to do something more we were not happy with by just by doing calculation because it was very vague doing calculation and we wanted to do something more then we came up with the programming language it was first programming language then we, de we developed our program by using cobalt and fortran so what they did we want to program something that whatever the instruction will fed into the system it will do that for us so if we'll say if we'll say hello moon then it will do that if we'll say print show us the image of nasa if we'll say hello show us the jupiter it will do the same thing for us and we always wanted to do more and then we thought of developing some games and the computer will work on only on instructions if we give the instruction to the computer to go left it will not dare to go right if we tell the computer to go up it will go up and now that we have we have achieved the state that yes we are able to we are able to send the emails we are able to do the presentation we are able to do some excel work we don't have to use abacus and soon we are also you know we are trying to achieve this that you know we can select gift automatically for a wife or maybe for a husband but uh, we are not there yet we are we are we are on our way to uh, to reach that point in life and what we want in life basically what we want basically the computer to do this sort of sorting we have uh, let's say you have a farm and uh, these are the these are the fruits that are coming on the conveyor belt you want to do some sort of sorting of these these fruits so what what you will do for that you will write some program for that please mute yourself all right so we let's say we want to identify a tomato or let's say we want to identify a apple how do we do that we have to write some condition we'll say that if it is red then keep it otherwise leave it now let's say if it is chili harvesting time now we want to identify the chilies in your farm so what we will do for that we will say if the color is green keep it otherwise leave it so now we will we'll try to make it more concrete because this was not concrete before we'll try to make it more concrete what can we say more about that we can say if something is round if something is red if something is of 100 gram keep that as a tomato remember that that is a tomato that's what we going to tell the computer but i guess that's not true that's not always true you know which is something which is something which is round something which is red something is of 100 gram you know you won't you won't tell somebody you won't tell your kids that it is hello hello nandesh yes you are audible please continue yes okay because somebody aman is saying again that i'm not audible Aman I think you need to disconnect you need to check your headphones or maybe some sort of problem with your audio device Okay 
so i was saying that everything which is everything which is round which is of which is of red color which is 100 gram that is not a tomato we cannot tell this thing to our kids so how do we teach to our kids when we when we were kids how do we learn that this is a tomato this is a apple everybody please mute yourself okay so what exactly we do what exactly we do if we want to memorize something how we teach to the kids not able to hear probably you can write a message okay so how do we teach our kids or how do we so how do we teach our kids how do we actually learn something probably we have to show different pictures of tomato different shapes of tomato different colors of tomato to our kids and tell them that yes it is different but still it is a tomato then might be they'll understand and this is what kid le kids learning is basically and machine learning is little different than that but it's it's the same it's just the same just you know but you are, we are using we are using machine in this case we are using machine machines in this case am i audible to everyone are you able to see my screen yes 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 sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no. okay okay so what i was saying is that how we teach to our, how we teach to our kids basically we show them different pic if we want to tell them that this is a tomato how do, how do they will recognize something how they will know that yes if this is a tomato or not we have to show them tomatoes of different sizes we have to show them tomatoes of different shapes maybe different colors so that's what kids learning is that's how we have learned you know in in our life when we were kids that's how we've learned and in the same way we do this with machines but that's that's little with the little tweaking we do that with machines and that is called machine learning so when we have a labeled data when we have a data which is which is labeled which we know that this kind of data we have that kind of learning is called supervised machine learning so that is the that is that is what machine learning is and supervised machine learning is when we know what we are looking at and what that thing is we tell that machine that yes you have to remember this that this is a tomato yes it is in different ah. shape it is in different color but still it is a tomato so that's what machine learning is basically so yes when we are able to... yes yes please anybody have any questions please ask please go ahead okay so now if we are able to recognize the tomato what can we do we can do this we can deploy that machine learning model in our we can we can deploy that if we are able to recognize that these are different shapes of tomato and if our model is able to recognize that we will deploy that in our farm and it will do this sort of sorting and it's way more better than teaching kids you know kids learning it's more better than that because if you will teach your kids that this is tomato and you have to sort it they are not going to work on your farm maybe 24/7 they are not going to do that but if you will teach your machine this thing they will be working on your farm 24/7 they will not get tired they will not get bored they will not get frustrated so that is the that is the advantage that we have with machine learning when machine are able to do the work of a human so now let's try to understand now that we have understand the term what is machine learning i guess everybody is clear with machine learning please type out yes if you are clear with that so that we can look into data science great great if anybody have any question please ask okay now let's let's try to look at what is data science 
so now you might be you might have read all of you might have read this article the data science is the sexiest job of 21st century and we might get this this is a buzzword nowadays that everybody is you know it, it's it, we are used to this word but basically what is data science let's try to understand so converting data into value that is the simplest term for data science we have data we have emails we have customer information once we churn that data and we convert that to be into value some sort of value in the monetary form maybe in sort of customer retention or it could be in different different forms so that is what data science is called so how data science came into picture how we came to know about data science how this thing started so in 1980s when ibm discovered or when ibm discovered the first relational database to store the data of customers or their payroll customer information big issue every time we have is anyone else is facing the same issue let me let me try to check let me try to reach in the internet let me. all right so i guess i'm audible to everyone if anybody is not able to hear me you will get the recording so don't worry about it you can watch the recording once the session is over is coming right okay so what i was saying is that once ibm discovered first relational database to store their information the customer information and the customer payroll information so then we thought of what can what else we can do with data we thought of extracting more with data because we humans we always want to do something more with data so we thought of discovering this term we end up discovering this term which is data mining so what does data mining is means so data mining means basically extracting information from the data now it's from the journal of data mining it's uh, published in 1997 the the journal is called as data mining for knowledge and discovery of databases so it's a very broad term basically so let's try to look at what does the uh, what does this says what does this paper says about the data mining so data mining is the application of specific algorithm to extract patterns from data so yeah it's very very obvious data mining is basically means you know getting the patterns or extracting the patterns from the data what the data is trying to tell us that's what data mining is basically now before this before we didn't have uh, data science or any sort of statistical you know any sort of tools that we can program we used to this is just, it seems really for the audio <laughs> so i think it's the network issue from your side Nandesh going pretty well gone but sir somebody is saying mr sohil sharma is saying that he want to listen but he is not able to we will just fix it, it up be, uh, 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 maybe maybe om can om om can do this please go on please go on and uh, everybody will get connected because at the end of it this recording is there again we can replay the whole thing Yeah. so otherwise we will uh, you know we will uh, just lose the track so uh, please it will uh, go on if, uh, if anybody can if anybody can type this out in the in the comment section or in the chat window that you will get the recordings i have already typed it out 
I have to complete this session, so in a limited time. So yes, let yes, me yes. let me try to focus and, on. That, and, okay? and go on, go okay. on at your own pace. Okay. Uh, it, it is perfectly fine. Go on. Right. And kindly, okay. Om, Om. So if basically, you, if you could, uh, yeah, please go on. Okay. So how we how we used to do this, you know, before data science, how we used to recognize the patterns from data. We, we use different statistical tools. We use these sort of graphs. We use them manually, and we used to get the patterns from the data. The um, Prabhjot asked, "What kind of patterns? Patterns could be of different time, you know, different kinds. You know, it, it could be something like this. As you can see in this graph, there is a pattern that if we are able to focus, we are able to see the patterns. Yes, there is a growth. There is a continuous growth. Maybe this this is a chart of a company revenue. There is a continuous growth in the revenue." in the past year maybe this is a chart for maybe a one year revenue yoi revenue of a company so it's been increasing so this sort of patterns you know we we are able to identify in the data before data science we were using before data mining we were using statistical tool but now that we have data we have you know these uh, we, we understand that yes there is a term something called as data mining and yes we understand computers so some guy came in and he thought of combining data mining with computer science so what does this mean? what does this gives us when we are able to identify the patterns and when we are able to code something when we are able to do some sort of coding when we are able to use computer science what does it gives us it gives us computer science so that's what we have computer science is sorry data science came into picture after that when we are able to identify patterns in the data and we are able to use data science i mean the computer science at the same place now after the dot com error <clears throat> after the dot com error when the when there were a lot of website being launched and a lot of buzz was going on on the internet about the data there was huge amount of data was being generated though yes there was a need for someone that can record this data and that can analyze this data if we talk about nowadays with each click on the social media each click on any web page that you go on there is humongous amount of data that is being generated so we need someone or we need some sort of technology that we can analyze this sort of data so but why why you know you might have this question that why do we need to you know find the patterns in the data why is it so important to find out the patterns in the data why do we even need it you know why there is a need for it so let's 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 assume that you are a retailer and you have the data of your customer and you have the customer history how they you know the purchase history of the customer and you are able to figure that out you are able to get it know you know uh, before this happens like let's say if somebody is pregnant somebody is about to pregnant and uh, you are able to, you are, you have that knowledge so what you will do you are able to sell them the product that you will sell to a pregnant family the pregnant parents that you will sell you will sell those products and this is what target did you can read when uh, what what's every what's even cheaper than target guessing that their parents so target recognize it using data science that somebody is pregnant and they need to sell these kind of product the pregnant uh, the the product that you sell to a pregnant parents they need you need to sell these product to these parents so how useful it is you can think of there are there could be many permutation and combination that you can come up with that how you can use data science now you must have if some of you have seen the movie moneyball please type out yes if some of you of any of you have seen the movie moneyball no <laughs> nobody has seen it okay no okay okay let me let me you can no, no, google they, it they, they, the session is over no no they, yeah uh, uh, maybe there are plenty but but they are not disclosing as of now <laughs> they will get back maybe once the session yes. is over <laughs> yes, yes yes okay but this was this was a very this was very interesting movie about and uh, what yeah. this movie the what was the plot let me give you an idea about the plot what the plot of the movie was basically basically so this movie was based on a boss you know baseball uh, you might have heard of this game yeah. baseball baseball team so there was a very poor baseball team which was losing all the games so they had a coach this guy they had a coach 
or the manager you can say he thought of doing something for the team so what he did he used different statistical tool he used different data science concept to identify undervalued player which were playing for different team and he identified those players and he picked those players for his team and what happened see there was a miracle that happened basically that team which they formed after choosing all the undervalued player that team won consecutively 20 baseball team in the american history so that was exceptional that happened so how did this happen we all might think you know how did this happen basically this happened just because of data science so this only happens because of data science so data science is basically it's a very broad term that i won't be able to cover it if, if it, it maybe it will take me five hours to cover this topic so let's let's see what the journal of data science says about the term data science so data science we mean almost everything that has something to do with data so you can think of anything which has something to do with data that can come up with your mind maybe you can think of you know developing some sort of drug that can cure some sort of problem maybe of cancer maybe you are trying to identify why there is a cancer why in this region that you are might be living in there is some sort of problem that you are identify you can identify that with the help of data you can use that data in, in the form of maybe in the share price prediction you can use that data in, in the form of uber that we can see uber algorithm that they have for the price prediction what is the price you want to get if you will travel this sort of distance different sort of uh, algorithm have been developed on top of data we have seen the recommendation system which is you which is developed by youtube and google which is used in youtube and also by the amazon which recommend us the product and there are many application you know it will take me a day to complete the application so now you might be thinking now the data is basically when we are able to tap out to the data we are able to explore the big data we have large amount of data we are able to tap out the data we are able to extract the information and then we are able to apply some sort of uh, algorithm on top of it but that's not it data science is way more than that it's much more than that no, not only applying algorithm and extracting the data visualizing the data it's not about that it's way more than that so let's try to understand how we human work basically first of all we think of food food and water then we can think of you know house and about life what is the real meaning of life that is the hierarchy that we follow but in case of data science first of all we need to collect the data we need to store the data then we can apply some sort of algorithm then we can do some sort of visualization on top of it so what is the role of data science comes into picture how what is the role of data science and what are the different roles we have in the field of data so first First of all, uh, there is a data engineer, someone who collects the data, who moves the data, who stores the data. And the data scientist is someone who explore the data, who try to understand the patterns in the data and who visualizes the data in front of you. And then there is a machine learning engineer who applies the machine learning algorithm on top of it and try to optimize that machine learning algorithm. So I guess this is clear to everyone. So in this session in the five day session what we will try to do we will first of all have we will try to collect data from different resources or i'll help you with that we'll try to collect data from different resources we'll try to clean that data then we'll try to explore that data what that data is trying to tell us what what is the story of that data then we'll try to visualize that data and then we will try to apply some sort of machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm on top of it so that is going to be the agenda of the five days, uh, the five days workshop that we have. So these are the different tools that we will also try to understand during the workshop about Python, the programming language that we will be using, about NumPy, which is a library that we have for the scientific calculation or number multiplication. This is uh, NumPy basically means numerical Python, and we'll also try to see pandas which is uh, which is used to deal with databases you can say some sort of it's a advanced version or optimized version of excel then we will also try to see tensorflow keras which is used for deep learning we'll also try to see scikit-learn which is the library which is uh, which is used for the machine learning model and we'll also try to see matplotlib which is used for the visualization so you might be thinking now what is this library and what are these different different uh, you know symbols or different different icons that i'm able to see so what is library as i told programmer they are very lazy 
you know they don't want to do this repetitive task again and again so basically these are the tasks that somebody have already done for us the this library is uh, this is a module some sort of you can say this is a module in which we have all different sort of machine learning model already written so what we have to do we just have to go we just have to get those model imported in our in a notebook or wherever the project that we are trying to solve we'll try to import it and we'll use that model in case of numpy we will try to use some some the code that somebody have already written and we'll try to do scientific calculation with the help of it with the help of matplotlib somebody have already written the code for how to draw bar chart how to draw scatter plot and different kind of pie chart different type of charts you know we will use that library we will reuse their code in and it will make our life easier obviously we'll use pandas which is already written by someone some geniuses which is already written by them and they provided continuous support as well so we'll use this for understanding our data for importing our data into the into the python or into the notebook also tensorflow is already written by someone and we'll try to use it to understand the deep learning and apply the deep learning model to it and keras is also an api of tensorflow so that's that's it for now and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll move into the linear regression which is uh, going to be the algorithm that we will try to understand today so before we, before i begin i think uh, if you have any questions you can ask hello yes nandesh yes sir yeah um, see i am durgesh yes, durgesh sir. pant i am and yes. uh, see before anybody asks uh, any question uh, because uh, what was uh, earlier uh, decided was that uh, i'll give a just a um, uh, brief introduction of the program and then um, i'll uh, supposedly i want to welcome you but since <laughs> i was uh, uh, talking to yes, uh, talking okay. to some uh, radio jockey rj of uh, radio kushi at 11 there yes, was a sir. program this community radio based we have several program these days so could not right. uh, formally you know um, set out this thing uh, so um, uh, first and foremost uh, yeah sir, thank you very uh, much because you. i welcome i welcome you on no, behalf no. of the whole prelika team sir <laughs> yeah thank you so, so much for joining this, uh, thank you so much for joining yeah, uh, brilika and all the participants there are all learned uh, participants uh, the, those who are uh, participating and uh, it it's thank a it's a uh, welcome thing as i see and i see uh, that this uh, program this online program uh, as you know uh, some 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 kind of uh, not only really newer initiative but uh, in this in the midst of this despondency and uh, sort of people were uh, people are not all that in all that uh, joyous mood so it is always good to start off you know a program like uh, data science machine learning and python to pandas right. to tensor flow deep learning these these things are very important keeping in view that uh, right. these days we are having all these data sets with regard to uh, covid 19 and uh, uh, all right. around the world so uh, it, it will provide newer opportunities uh, to everyone we see amazon these days we see facebook these days we see uh, this right, uh, whatsapp right. these days and what i am saying is right. if you look at the trend facebook um, to you see all these companies they virtually monopolize everything can't we develop right, something sir. of our own can't we develop this capacity this machine learning deep learning ai can't we do something of consequence this is what always triggers me this is what uh, always invokes me so the possibly right, this sir. capacity exercise and brilika i'm thankful to uh, yogendra and extremely thankful to my usac team that is om umesh arasdeep they have been splendid and these four guys Uh, they have done a remarkable thing. In fact, they came up with this whole idea that we got to have something of this short. So it will be a sequel. I mean, it will be. It is going to be a sequel. You you will have this thing, right. and then we can have several such programs and uh, rest a short. Maybe all those who are interested, because these are all learned people. They have already done, you know, uh, 
we 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 talking about data mining we talking about ml many of them they know python they they are familiar with uh, uh, deep learning also because they 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 they, they know about uh, all those an and neural network those models so it is good right. that uh, it is some yeah. some kind of a revisit for all of them and my only right. request being because uh, mm -hmm. at the end of this program we um, supposed to give them and we, we we intend to give them a project so what can we do right. to begin with if they can just have some idea as to you know they can come up with some idea they can build something over it and subsequently right. users can help them you know in order to uh, develop some uh, project which is of significance and maybe we right. can so, do something worthwhile right. so from the world exactly. go from today onwards if something starts you know uh, uh, triggering uh, to triggering mm -hmm. them and it can be something some something uh, something interesting and uh, furthermore right. after, at the end of this session maybe they can send mails they can start uh, conversing on themselves and we can have and uh, some some dialogue some interaction so we can have a good ml ai data science community developed in uttarakhand and outside in the country itself so I am think right, I'm, right. I am I am I am thinking on those lines. So I I'll chip in in That's between, and right. since we are right. working closely with this health department and this thing, so I'll I'll keep joining in because uh, it is all locked down. But I have been traveling around, so <laughs> doing many things <laughs> with health department <laughs> things. But uh, my right, entire sir. team is there, and Yogendra, and special thanks to you, and thanks to all the participants who are there. I know them individually, many of them, and they are all my good friends. So heads off right. because they have taken their time off. This is something very important yes. and it's a huge contribution, especially in this hour right. of crisis, because every crisis right. ultimately leads to profit. Thank you. Please go. Yes. Thank, yes. You. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir, Thank you so for much. your kind words. This is Yogendra. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you deserve it. You deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if anybody have any questions, you can ask. Before I jump into linear regression, the basic model that you will see in, you know, in all the research paper that you will come across. All the, you know, the complex model, they are based on the simplest linear regression model. So we'll try to look at it, what this model is basically, how this algorithm works. We'll try to understand it. Uh so if Nandesh, anybody, I'm, anybody has... I'm getting one uh, question request from Mr. L.M. Pant. Actually, he's asking a question. What is metadata and its uses to get the patterns or information? So if you can address that. Met metadata, basically. So metadata is basically the, you, I would say, the crux of a data, how that data is generated. So the, the, about the source, it tells us about the source of a data how the data is coming from which source and how the you know what is the frequency of their data is coming so it's related to that so we can we can un we can understand the traffic if if the metadata of a website if we look at that we can understand about the traffic how the website is you know getting the traffic what is the frequency how many numbers of clicks we are getting on per minute or something of that sort it could be in different sense you know but this is how i put it so if anybody have any other question Yes, sir. I have a question. I am from Anula. So, sir, my question is how can we use data science in a security domain and what are the tools that are coming in the today's market related to the data science? If we can talk is about, you know, the things that have come. Yes, obviously there are multiple tools for that, but I'm just saying if we can talk about the things that I've covered in the in the presentation, that would be better, you know. Because you can ask you can ask this question to me in personal basis. You can send, drop me an email, and I will definitely love to answer this question. But uh, for now, if you can answer, if you can ask me the question which are related to the presentation, the stuff that I have presented for now. Okay, okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, chip in, I'll I'll chip in only for five seconds. If you, if you permit me, I'll just chip in for five minutes, uh, five seconds. See uh, what will happen because. Um, Everybody, especially our uh, learners and many students, they are keen to know about the prospects of data science. So they will have several right. questions with regard to uh, with regard to uh, employment opportunity and uh, basic skilling that will lead to some job generation. 
so uh, right. my um, th th this thing would be request mm -hmm. would be maybe we can have a small you know um, some some note that we will circulate because ultimately this presentation mm -hmm. is beautiful and uh, um, uh, till this presentation is you know complete and all 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 these issues are fundamentals and appreciation of uh, the, those things are generally over um, mm -hmm. nobody would be in a position to answer or respond to those queries so a small right. note with regard to um, job generation in the domain of one two three four five this could also be circulated especially for a suppose a, um, um, a psc student having you know this basic python knowledge so which are the domains openings and this 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 so th this could be taken up otherwise all these questions it will not be possible especially uh, for mandesh to respond to these queries right sir. Uh, absolutely sir we will be circulating the complete documents right along with all the introductory notes and everything okay to all the participants at the end of the session yes 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 okay all right Okay, let me start with the first algorithm that is linear regression that you might have heard of this term linear regression. So let's try to look at it. What's this linear regression means? So let's let's assume that uh, you are a producer of a movie. You used to produce a lot of movies and you have produced a lot of movie. You have earned a lot of money and now you are you are planning or you have invested a lot of money in a movie which is called the rising of zombies part five and I don't know if it is the worst title that you might have heard or, or not but i this is the what this is what i came up with so <laughs> let's say that you wanted to produce a movie you are a producer and you have you have spent everything you have staked your reputation you have uh, mortgaged your house you have sold your cars you have spent all the money that you have in your bank account for that particular movie now you wanted to know whether you know that movie is going to succeed or not you need some sort of prediction whether that movie is going to make a hit on the box office or not you want to find that out you want you want some sort of you know a uh, guardian angel that can guide you through that whether this movie whether the money that you are pouring in this movie is it going to worth it or not so how we are going to solve it with the help of data science only so data science is our guardian angel who is going to help us to solve this particular problem for us to know that whether this movie that we are trying to plan we are trying to release or we are trying to produce whether this movie is going to be a hit or not so how you know how we will solve this particular problem how if let's say let's uh, let's uh, let's look at this question at a data scientist perspective how if there is a data scientist and if he's looking at this problem if you come if you go to a data scientist and you tell him that this is the problem that i have i am a producer and i want to produce a movie and uh, what should i you know what should i do i want to know whether this movie is going to be a hit or not so first of all he will say that you need to formulate the question you need to formulate the question that what is the question you want me to answer that question need to be concrete that question need to be precise that i can answer because based upon that question all my research all my data gathering and all the other personal steps are going to be based on this question only so first he will answer this question so let's let's try to answer this question what this question is going to look like you know on a on a broader perspective so might be this question looks like how much money will a movie make so this this might be the question you know how much movie this uh, you know how much money we can make from this movie but i think that's not a that's not a concrete question that's not a precise question so let's try to let's try to go into deeper more deeper so we could say that how much revenue will a movie make so i guess that's the more precise question that we can we can ask to a data scientist or if we are a data scientist we can address this problem in this way that let's say we, i have some revenue that I, I i have some money that i have invested in this movie so is there a way to find out that how much money i'm gonna make so because let, let, let let's assume that how a movie if there is a movie and how does that movie makes money so first of all you need good actors or good actresses in your movie if you wanted to make money you need good scripts you need to have a good script you need to pay to the cop you know to the script writer 
to make no you know for, for make you a good script you also need a good director because you need a name that can uh, that can the vision that you have in your mind or the script writer the vision they have in their mind the director can help you cast that vision to you know to showcase that vision to the audience also you need a lot of marketing costs involved so all it comes down to is money we need money to pay good actors we need money to pay the good scripts you know the script writers we need money to pay the good directors and also the marketing cost is going to cover through the money only now all it boils down to money that we need a lot of money if we want to make a lot of money that's very obvious you know if you there is a saying you you can make money with money that's very obvious <clears throat> so let's let's try to see that is there any movie that we have seen which have invested a lot of money in it maybe billions of dollars and it have uh, it have if have you know this movie have earned a lot of money you know in return so yes there was a movie which was avatar i guess everybody is uh, aware of this movie avatar so let's try to look it in a in the form of you know in the form of data science perspective or in the form of equational way here we have the revenue and here we have the budget so what we are trying to find out we are trying to find out the relationship between the budget if i have some sort of budget and what will be the revenue so let's try to look at the previous movies there was a movie avatar which spent a lot of money on the budget and yes he uh, this this movie also earned a lot of money in return there was a movie which was avenger which spent a lot of money and they also earned money in return there was a movie titanic which spent a lot of money and they earned in return so yes we can see there is some sort of relation that uh, between the between the budget and the revenue so this is our hypothesis that we want to find out there is a relation we can clearly see there is a relation but we want to find out that relationship into more deeper way that how that relation is formed what are the different aspects and all so let's try to look at that way so <clears throat> now we can readdress our question so can we use a movie budget to predict movie revenue this is going to be i guess a more data scientific you know uh question that you would ask to someone if you are approaching to a data scientist and if you are telling him this question if you will ask him this question he will definitely help you that can you use a movie budget to predict the movie revenue because you gave him clear instructions that uh, these are the input variable the movie budget is your input and we need the output to be as the revenue because obviously data scientist also a computer engineer he knows about programming so obviously he will be always looking for input and output so the input here is going to be the movie budget and the output is going to be the movie revenue so let's try to look at it now what exactly do we need once we formulate the question what exactly do we need let's let's go back and let's try to address to the workflow let's try to look at the workflow how the workflow of data science sciences project work if you come up with a project how you solve that project or if you want to some problem how you solve that problem so first of all you 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 need to have a question you need to have a concrete question a precise question which have all the ingredient that you need to answer right so that that's very important in this case we have found that question we want to find out the relationship between the movie budget and the revenue that the movie can generate the next step is going to be obviously data gathering we need to have some sort of data that we can apply our algorithm on or we can apply a linear regression model or maybe different uh, logistics or different models that we will try to build on during the during the course we'll, so for, we need data for that you know how, how where are you going to apply that model if you don't have a data so we need to have data but the real world data is always messy is unstructured it's in different format so we need to do the formatting we need to do the structuring of the data we need to remove the missing values from the data and what we need to do after that we need to do the exploration and visualize the data just by looking at the numbers you're not going to we are not going to get any sort of clear picture from just by looking at the numbers so we need to visualize that data in the form of bar charts in the form of scatter plot or different different uh, type of visualization that we will try to look at then what we need to do we need to 
train the algorithm so we'll we'll look into this term algorithm or train the algorithm in more more uh, in depth but uh, for for now i would say it's basically a function that we are trying to find out we have an input we ha and we want to predict the output so what is going to be the function because i guess we all have solved the equations of mathematics right when where we have if one is equal to three if we give one input we are getting the output as three if we are giving three input we are getting the output as six so there is some sort of relation between the input and the output so we will try to find out that relation by using our algorithm and then also we want to evaluate because we nobody is going to come and tell you that this is the problem that uh, you know your algorithm how you're going to check the accuracy of the algorithm how you're going to make sure that your algorithm is performing better or worse or is it average so you're going to have some sort of evaluation that you can look at and then if you found that your algorithm is not working good then you need to go back you need to check your question you need to do the same process again you need to gather the data maybe you need to clean it again you need to visualize it you need to again apply the algorithm so this is the workflow of data science pro, pro, you know project is like okay so now we need to gather the data so what sort of what is what are the features that we are looking at for the data for the data what we are looking at the features is movie budget in usd and the target that we want to find out is the movie revenue in usd i have talked about this in usd because i've got the data only for the usd movies the movies that are produced in in the us uh, only uh, in the, in the form of usd the revenue they have so that's why so yes the, there is a there is a way there is a solution that i found to this problem and there was a website that i found on the internet while surfing through the internet i found this website that's number and this website say where the data and the movie business meet so yes that's answer to a question that yes we can have we can have a, uh, we can have a data to be collected from this website so what i'll do i'll share the link of this website in the comment section if somebody want to go to this website they can give me a second so i'm sharing the link so this is the website now to collect data or to look at the movie budgets what we need to do we need to click on movies and then we need to go for budgets and finances right so on this side over here we are able to see the biggest budget movie they have divided this into different section so they have biggest budgets the movie which have invested a lot of money approximately they have a you know the production budget of approximately 400 400 i guess it's like one two three four five six seven eight yeah, it's it's something it's really it's 400 million and they have the domestic growth and they, they have a domestic gross and the worldwide growth is approximately 2.7 billion dollars that this movie have earned and also they have some movie with lowest budget that can that earn approximately 1 million dollars so see this is the this is very amazing that i found here for a, a hypothesis so you can see al mirachi there is a movie al mirachi i guess everybody is able to see this al mirachi the production budget for this movie was approximately seven thousand dollars and see how much this movie got this movie got approximately two million dollars that that's amazing right isn't it amazing so there was most most profitable movies now we have based on the absolute profit on the worldwide gross so this was the movie that have earned you know the most profitable movie it had it has counted to be see the budget of this movie the uh, annual income of this movie annual expense and the profit how much expenses and how much profit this movie have got now for our purposes we need to look in we need the data for it right so let's try to find out that i clicked on see the complete list okay so here i have the list of all the movies so I have gathered this data for making your life easier. I've gathered all this data and put it in an Excel. So this is the Excel sheet that I have here. 
Uh, I'll try to share that with you. Let me see. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the dirty Excel that I have. I think it's not shareable on. Okay, so don't worry, I'll provide you the link later on maybe. So I have this Excel right here. So in this Excel, let's look at the Excel, okay? Okay, just hang on. So in this Excel, what I have, the features that I have is rank, the rank of a movie, then we have a release date, then we have a title of a movie, production budget, worldwide gross, domestic gross, and all this information is there. Now let's try to look at this data because once you're gonna get and collect the data, obviously you need to make sure the data is correct. Now let's try to look at this data. Now I found few things in this data which I'll try to explain to my best. So there was a movie which was, uh, let me find that out. Okay, it was somewhere here. You can see there are movies, lots of movies which has uh, zero budget, you know, zero budget and zero revenue. No, they have some sort of budget. This is the budget window and this is the revenue. They have zero revenue. So isn't that strange? There must be some reason for it, right? Let's try to figure that out. Let's try to understand what is the reason that we have, uh, you know, we, they have invested money in a movie and then it turned out to be, you know, you know, give, give you nothing. So there was a lot of movies that I see. You can see this is the anti-birth and so on. So I guess I'm not able to find that movie. Uh, what was the movie name? So the, uh, let me tell you what that movie was. There was some movie that I found on this Excel. So this movie was uh, uh, this was this movie was supposed to be released in you know uh, like not not today like in 2020 in like seventh or eighth month some something of that sort. So that's like they have spent money into it but it has not been released sir could you simply send the google docs link yeah i'll try to do that okay yeah please have a look okay so when I went back to the website, what I found is, let me go to the website back again. So what this says, see, the charts show the budget of every film in our database where we have it. The data we have is best of our knowledge, accurate, but there are gaps and disputed figures. So that means the data that they have is not complete. It's incomplete, right? they have some sort of problem so i checked for other movies as well there's there because we have seen this in you know in india also that there is a lot of money that has been invested on a movie and uh, it is not they are not able the producers they are not able to release that movie maybe due to some sort of disputes between the courthouse or due to the between due to the producers or maybe you know between the actress or there are different sort of you know dispute that we see now that's that's you know that's that means uh, we have to understand the data that we have here which is giving us the value for the worldwide gross and the domestic gross is zero so we need to delete that because that is not going to help our algorithm right so we need to delete that and also we need to keep in we need to keep this thing in mind that the rank this feature rank release date uh, please mute yourself whoever it is please if anybody can mute someone who is uh, there is a background that i'm getting thank you okay so see the thing is that we have different features over here that is release date release date rank movie title and domestic gross so that's that's not our concern i mean we don't require these titles we don't require this so what we need to do we need to delete them we're going to delete them manually 
okay so i'm going to select this rank delete uh, release date movie title domestic growth that doesn't matter to me i just need the worldwide growth so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete all of them It just got unselected i'm so sorry okay let's try to delete them now okay now we have deleted those columns which were not useful to us now let's try to look at this way now we also want to delete the movies which has zero as their worldwide growth so how do we do that we need to select our data we need to go to the sort range and we need to we need the header of the data and what we want to do we want it as to be in the form of yeah a to z we want the column uh which one is it we want the column to be yeah we want it to be in the form of zero budget okay uh, no 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 we want yeah that's what we want let's let's try to look at it this way okay now see if we have here the movies which have zero as worldwide gross so what we are going to do we are just going to delete all those values let's select them all let's delete them I guess everybody is able to follow me if you are doing that on your sheet if anybody any problem you can watch this video maybe at the end of the session so i'm deleting the rows now that i have deleted the rows which have zero as the worldwide grows i need to do some sort of thing over here i need to also delete this one okay where do I delete it? Data. No, no, no. I don't want this. Let's hold on. Let's move it here. Okay. Now we need to change the titles first of all because there are a lot of spaces in the titles, so we don't want that. So let's try to address the titles first of all okay we'll try to make it in the form the pythonic form that python can understand because there are no spaces that we can take in the title in the header i would say so let's try to change them white white cross usd okay now we have this now can you see over here there is a dollar sign then there is a lot of commas that we see so that is not going to help me that is going to make my algorithm confused so let's let's uh, do something with this so where do we go we go to format then we go to numbers i think everybody is able to follow then we go to we go to format then we go to numbers then we go to more formats then we go to custom number format then see over here we have different formats so what we need to do we need to select the second one which is 0, 0.00 let's apply okay now i have my data in the grade form it's it's, it's amazing for the analysis now i have already created a sheet a different sheet where i have done all the same things and i have that in this form this is the sheet which i call cost revenue clean so this is the cleanest sheet you know so i'll also share the link for this if somebody is not able to do it not the cleaning part so i'll also share okay it's not shared hang on guys hang on I think you've got it. Yeah, I've shared it twice. Okay. 
so i think you've got it now okay now what we have done is basically we have done the cleaning of our data right we have done the cleaning we have done, we have removed some sort of missing values from the data we have done some sort of formatting of our data now what is the next step we have done this right we have done the missing value we have uh, income we have deleted the incomplete data inaccurate data we, we did some formatting so that that's done from our side now what what is the next step that we do now we need to explore the data and we need to visualize the data that's that's the next step that is going to be please type yes if you follow me if you are able to understand what i'm trying to great 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 okay so we are doing it manually for now we will do it with the help of python maybe in the next session we will do it with the help of python today i just try to make it as simple as i can so now we are going to do the exploration please mute yourself whoever it is if somebody can mute i'm getting a feedback please mute thank you so much please mute yourself oh no okay now we have formulated the question we have cleaned the data we have gathered the data uh, yogendra can you help can you mute that person thank you so much whoever did it thank you okay no. <laughs> oh again well, who is this i mean i don't know that's me whoever it is okay now see we have the data in this form we have some sort of numbers and we have some sort of you know we have input variable which we call the input variable that we have and we also have a target variable that we want to target that is a worldwide gross but just by only looking at the numbers we cannot understand what these numbers are trying to tell us we need to visualize them so what do we do to visualize them is there a way that we can visualize them yes there is a way we can visualize them in this form this is the scatter plot that we have and over here i have the production budget and over here i have the worldwide gross so on this side you can see uh, there is a clear relation between them so we'll look into that later on maybe but see this is in this form it is more clear to us that what is this data is trying to tell us we'll try to see why there is a dark over here why we have uh, what is the reason for it we'll look into that later on maybe but uh, this is in this form it's it's better for us to understand we can clearly see that there is a relation between them okay now what do we need to do if somebody of if someone from your side if you have you, if you are already using jupiter notebook that's amazing otherwise i will share the link with you that you can use it online let me try to find it out where i have it maybe if you have if you have already installed anaconda on your computer that is amazing guys otherwise what you can do you can just go to google you can try type it out try jupiter org that's the website so i'll share with you collaboratory there is a difference uh, there is a different command for uh, uh for uh, uploading the data i would recommend you to use uh, yeah i know about collab i know if you could use jupiter that would be better that would be better because there are different uh, we have to upload the data we have different commands okay great now we need to click on the first one over here try classic notebook it's just like this just the same as jupiter please click on the first one and it will take us it will connect to the binder it will take some time everybody please do the same thing with me
it's taking some time. Okay, cool. So we have Jupiter. Is everyone clear with Jupiter? Do I need to explain about Jupiter? How do we use Jupiter and all? If anybody wants, I can give you a little description about Jupiter. Why do we use Jupiter and all? Yes, please. Do you want me to? Okay. So the reason why we use Jupiter, Jupiter is the IPython notebook that we have. What does IPython mean? IPython means interactive Python. So in Jupiter, what we do is basically whatever the code we are going to do, we are going to get the output in the same window. Let's try to do something Pythonic. Let's try to add two numbers. When we try to add two numbers, I get the output on the same same window. Right, but it's different with other uh, if, if I use different IDs like uh, like VS code, maybe or different different IDs that we have. So it's different with them. But the reason why we use it, it's very useful for the data analysis and all the data scientists, you will see them. They are using this these notebooks, the Jupyter notebook or maybe a collab Google collab when they are doing some sort of GPU operation, then they will use Google collab. Otherwise, they will be using Jupyter notebook and also you can write down things in Jupyter notebook like they have written it down. So if I go here and it's uh, if I see over here, it's saying code. So it's a code. So if I want to write something over here, so I have to go back here and I just have to click on markdown. So now if I type, I can type anything, sum of two numbers, right? So this will be for me, uh, you know, as a reminder that when I come back and look at my notebook and I'm not able to understand, you know, what this, why I did it. I mean, I have some sort of markdowns there. So this is how Jupyter, work so what we will do we will create a new notebook first of all okay we need to create a new notebook hold on please If somebody is using Anaconda, they can also do the same thing with Anaconda. This one, okay. So this is the home for the Anaconda. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload my file. So if you will click on the Jupyter icon over here, it will take you to this window. Please click on this icon on the Jupyter notebook that you have. Oh, no. Okay. Let me try to show it to you again. For an example, if you will have your uh, Jupyter like this, and if you will click over here, it will take you to this page. Now, what do we need to do? We need to upload the file that we have cleaned. Okay. So what I do, I'll upload the file that we have cleaned. Or uh, let me do one thing. Yeah, let me go back. Let me go to desktop. And uh, yeah, I have these two files. So I'm going to upload both of them and uh, Jupyter, you know the Jupyter while we are using Jupyter online it might get disconnected again and again so you need to make sure that uh, when you are doing some sort of code you need to download the file now let's say we want to open in a new tab so i have already written a code up here so i'll try to explain why i did something okay if I did something, why I did. So first of all, we need to import pandas. Okay, let's uh, let's give it a name. 
everybody please do it with me uh, just go up here and download this file first of all you can download this file there must be some option here to download it yeah download this file as uh, excel and then you can uh, go back to your jupyter terminal the jupyter online and then you can upload the jupyter if you are not able to do it don't worry you can watch this video once the session is over so let's let's give it a name as linear rig so i'm just giving this file as linear rig so i told you this thing before that uh, when we want to do some sort of manipulation or when we want to read the files now we have this file in the excel so we want to read this file so we will be reading this file with the help of the command with the help of a library that i told you before the library is pandas i guess everybody is familiar if somebody is not so it's like the advanced version of is the advanced advanced version of excel so we have imported pandas okay go slow okay <laughs> okay okay let me do that again so the thing is that we will be using pandas let me take you guys to the pandas can you repeat excel upload okay yeah so what you have to do you have to go here click on the file you download the file and download it that's right now you have to click on this oh no this was the notebook right you just have to yeah I'm, I'm doing that sakshi i'm doing that on this notebook that wherever you are you just have to click over here please can you see this this sign you have to click the jupiter sign click on it yes it will take you on this page right then what you have to do you just have to click on the top which says upload and then you have to select that file which you want to upload which you want to analyze okay does everybody follow please type yes if you are able to do that yeah you should save it as excel excel yes 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 correct 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 okay cool cool everybody so let me let me open that file again oh no yaar okay let me open that file again okay there i have so i was showing you the pandas uh, documentation if somebody wants to master you know uh, pandas they can refer to this documentation if somebody wants to know more about pandas they can refer to the panda docs so pandas is basically a library that we have in python why is it not opening uh, give me a second guys is there a, what is wrong with it okay so pandas why do we use pandas basically panda, pandas we use to read csv files if we want to read a csv file we need some sort of library if we want to read the excel file we need some sort of library so that library is pandas so pandas is basically built on on top of numpy and uh, yeah we'll see numpy okay let me show you numpy also so numpy is basically it's the numerical python and it is used for the scientific calculation array multiplication and different types of things that you can do with the like you know numpy so these are one of the essential libraries that you need to know for data science so i have shared both the links on both the websites and you can go through it maybe once the session is over so now what we need to do uh, in pandas they have written a code with help of which you can read the csv file so we want to have that functionality in our notebook and for that what we are going to do we are going to import pandas import p a n d a s pandas okay does everybody follow sign in where do we get the link i have shared the link 
in the chat window. I've shared the link. We don't need to sign in anywhere. It's all free, open source, nothing to sign in. Now, once we read this, what we need to do, first of all, we need to read our now with the help. You don't need to, ma'am, you don't need to sign in anywhere. Okay, please follow along. Okay. Now, what we need to do, we need to read our data. So asking for commands. Which command, ma'am? I don't understand what you're saying. We have to get this command. Uh, th this is the command I'm telling you. I am telling you this command. I said, if you want to know about the more commands, you can go to the pandas documentation, which I have shared with you. That how pandas work, different things about pandas. I'm just telling you about the command. This is the command. If you want to import import pandas into a Jupyter notebook, this is the command that we have. I am importing it. Okay, cool. So, uh, so what this means is basically, if I want to do any 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 work with related to pandas, so I have to use pandas. So that's a big name, right? So what we can do, we can say pandas as pd. That's what we usually do. So that means pd is the alias that we have for pandas after uploading the what will be next move that's what i'm explaining you what will be the next move you need to open the jupyter notebook by going here you need to click on new you will click here new please mute yourself i'll, I'll answer all the question you need to click on new right next to upload there is an option which is new you need to click on that then you need to click on python 3 and it will open the notebook cool okay so what i was saying is that i have imported pandas so in future in the notebook if i have to use pandas i have to write pandas every time so just to avoid that what i did i imported pandas as pd so i've given a name to pandas the pd so if I want to use any functionality of pandas, I will be referring it to be PD. Okay. Now I want to read my data. So this is the object. This is the object I am creating with the name of data. So what I'm going to do PD read, or if you want to look into different commands, what you should do, you should just type read. Then you should tap the tab window, tab key of your keyboard tab key when you tap the tab key you will see different functions over here are you able to do it so you need to select the second one read csv please mute yourself whoever it is and then we are going to put a parenthesis and then we are going to type in the name of the file in the commas then we are going to type the name of the file so what was the name of the file let me look at it do I have the file here? Yeah, it's cost revenue. Cost underscore revenue underscore clean. So I need to type in the same name. Or I'll do a copy. Nothing happened by tapping the tab key. Uh, type it again and again, you will get it. Multiple times you need to type it maybe. After the first command. Yeah, when you, okay, let me show you again. When I type read dot CSV, then I keep on hitting the pandas key. Maybe once or twice, I might get the option. See, I type twice, then I got the option. So I need to select the second one, read CSV. Otherwise, you can type it on your own. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to avoid some discrepancy, but you can just uh, look at my screen and type it the same thing that I'm typing. Okay. So when I click on now, if I Okay, that's all right. If you're not getting it, you should type it on your own. Okay. Uh, how you would get a second after first line. Okay, how you, you need to click on the plus sign over here. Can you see this is for inserting cells. If I keep I can keep on inserting cells here. If I want to delete cells, I can cut them. So I've deleted everything. Now, now I will do that again. Import first of all, what do we need to do? We need to import pandas at PD. Then if you want to run this cell, we need to either 
click over here run cell or what we can do we can do shift plus enter okay now once we have imported pandas as pd we need to create an object which will be called as data please mute yourself there's a lot of noise okay so now i need to use a command of pandas that pd read dot read underscore csv because this is a csv file and uh, pandas uh, you know it's it's very useful for pandas to read the csv file it's very easy for them now i'm going to paste the name of the file make sure you type in the correct name otherwise it's going to give you an error now again either you can click on run or either you can do shift plus enter now you have your data loaded in the notebook in this python notebook and uh, once i stop discussing you can download this note notebook because it might get disconnected and then you might have to redo things again from the beginning okay so once i will jump back to the slide the presentation i will download it okay now we want to look at our data how does our data look like so if i just click if i just type data and then press shift plus enter it will show me my whole data set so in my whole data set i what i can see here is there are 5034 rows and there are two columns production budget and worldwide gross usd so there is a different if if you don't want to see all the rows and columns what you can do there is a command which is uh, data dot head and this shift plus enter so what this command will do this will show you only the first five rows this will only show you the first five rows or if you want more rows you can just type in any number here you can just say n is equals to 10 it will show you 10 if you want more rows if you want to look at more rows then you can type 15 it will show you more if you want to look more rows now it's a, there is a different now the head is going to show you the rows and the columns from the beginning from the top if you want to see the rows or the columns from the bottom of the notebook then what you can do you can type in tail t a i l tail pd is not defined then that means you haven't imported it correctly you need to run the cell ma'am you need to run the cell first import pandas as pd type this thing in your first cell type this in your first cell first of all then run it click on run or shift plus enter now this is what tails does okay now we have uh, our data now we want to know more about the data what how does the data is scattered how, you know different values what i can do there is a function called describe in pandas so i'm going to use that function okay i think i did some mistake here okay now i have here describe so what does this tells me basically so this function tells me each and everything about my data that i need to know like the count how many values are there like about the mean what is the mean of this value what is the mean of this value what is the mean what what, what is the standard deviation std mean standard deviation what is the minimum value what is the 20, where is the 25% data lies where is the 50% data lies where the 75% data lies what is the maximum value so we can have a statistical understanding from this that how our data is scattered we can look into different you know different aspects of our data now you might be you might be you know thinking why i am getting this value this is in the scientific notation right so but we can check what exactly this value is right let's 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 look into that it's uh, it's 5.0340 e3 right so this is the actual value so we have the count is 5034 now you must be wondering if i one more thing that i want to point uh, your attention towards okay 
if i go to if i go to head and check the first five rows uh, can you see the numbering is starting from 0 0 1 2 3 4 so an error showing that data is not defined can you help me out okay did you did you uh, have you done the step have you uploaded the data have you used the same command did you uploaded the data in this section you need to make sure that you have uploaded your data in this section that's when you are able to that means you are typing the wrong name check if the name is correct a uh, file is downloaded at xls so the command should, yeah no that's not a problem that's not a problem no 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 that's not going to be a problem it's a csv file if you go and ch check to the setting it's a csv file it's a format you can see it's csv.csv xls file most of the cases they are re read as csv files the data set and the notebook must be in the same location ma'am yeah that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to make them in the same location okay let's uh, let's let's get back to the notebook what i was saying in in uh, in uh, notebook in uh, jupyter notebook the numbering start from 0 1 2 3 so basically this is uh, we have done the reading of the data we are able to read the data correct we are we can see the different values what is the mean let's look at the mean data set is okay let's look at the mean it's 3.29 e to the power e to the power 7 so this is the value that we have this is the mean that we have here so in the same way you can look into the different uh, different aspects of the data now the the thing that we need to do we need to assign these value sir what does 50% mean 50% mean where is the 50% data lies what is the error why does it say file not found ma'am maybe you haven't uploaded the file into the same directory you need to first of all upload the file you need to go here click on upload select the file check if the name is correct the name of the file should be the same copy the name from here then go back here type the name here then shift plus enter there is a problem with the name only that's the reason ma'am you can watch this video later on maybe or uh, maybe at the end of the session i'll try to resolve your query it says already exists that means you have run the cell twice ma'am you have run the cell twice okay now let's try to look at what we want to do now we want to store our values for x and y in different variables we want to store the value of x in a different variable and we want to store the value of y in a different variable for that we need to import a different functionality from pandas that is going to be data frame so we are going to import pan uh, we are going to import data frame can you send the presentation yeah sure sure i will i will do that okay so what i was saying yeah i will have to import import uh, oh, no, no. i have to from pandas i have to import this from, from pandas i have to import data frame data frame yeah so i have to import data frame because i will i need to store these values in, in a different data frame i need to store these value in a different data frame because one of them is going to act as a input one of them is going to act as a output sir when the pandas was imported wouldn't all the module imported already just for the just for the safer side you know 
obviously all the imports uh, have been done but just to be on the safer side just to make you guys you know understand ab about the different modules that's why i'm doing it otherwise all the modules have been already imported we can try that you know maybe you can switch the modules and you can check you can delete the command i haven't tried it okay now what we need to do we need to store the x value in a data frame okay let's store it x is equals to data can we import data frame as df yeah you can you can yeah you can use it as the df then later on you can that's not a problem so what we need to do we need to first of all pass in the data frame frame then we need to pass in the data object that i have this is basically a please repeat the command i am typing it out uh, himanshu you can see it right here this command you are talking about the other one from pandas i will sh what i will do at the end of this session i will share this notebook with you also the complete notebook i'll share with you okay the data i will be using and the column which column i want to use the column okay the column that i want to use is production budget i want to store the values of production budget into it now let's run it we got col okay columns yeah this is the command columns all right now if i and also the same way now can somebody tell me how can i import uh, the output variable how can i store the output variable i'll wait for two three one or two minutes if somebody can tell me because it's very simple nobody somebody can tell me how can i store the target variable y okay i'll i'll do it data frame then we did data then we did columns how many maximum rows there is no maximum there is no maximum all the values that we have we are just we are putting all those values why do we care about the maximum we can have n number of rows n number of columns in our data frame it's not in our control basically great with you great 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 cool okay now if i look at uh, the y if i do the head of y so see y has only the worldwide gross it's very simple it's very obvious from the command but i'm just trying my best to make you guys understand as simple as i can and also the x has these values now we did the imports we have done the cleaning now what you can do you can download this notebook you can download it because there are other things that we will be doing after this because once i get disconnected this notebook might get deleted or some something happened some error came in okay so you can download it once you have completed all these steps we, because we might be going back to the presentation so or what you can do you can come back and run the cell again and again okay so let's uh, let's come back to the presentation now now let's try to before you know because we have to do the theory of linear regression what i will do i we can take a 5 minutes break if everybody is okay with that we can take a 5 minutes break and then we can come back if somebody wants to drink water or go washroom or anything then we can start the session again because theory you know you need to be ready for that a little energy would be one o'clock one o'clock we will be again uh, uh, getting back will it be fine one o'clock one o'clock yes sir, no problem perfect okay
ओके ओके थैंक यू इट्स वेरी ग्रेट ओके ओके थैंक यू सर हेलो हेलो
Hello. Hello.
Hello everyone. I hope I'm audible. Please type yes if everybody joined in. So we can start the session because we have to wrap up the session uh, at 1.30. Everybody join in, please. Yes, type yes so that I can start. And uh, if somebody haven't joined, please message them to join. They might be missing on something very crucial. Please somebody message. If somebody is not able to join. Yeah, I'll be starting. Okay. Okay, now let's look into the theory of linear regression, regression theory. And this is one of the most used algorithm that I have seen when you go to see, look at any research paper, this will be the algorithm that you will see there. I am pretty much sure for that. This algorithm has to be there. Now let's look into it, what this algorithm does basically. Now, what we have done till now, we have uh, what we have done till now, we have understand the question. We did the gathering, we did the cleaning. Okay. Oh yeah, one more thing, one more thing that was left before going to the linear regression. I would like to show you the exploration. Let's let's try to explore the data first of all. That's very important. Let's try to explore it. Where is my notebook? Yeah, here I have. It's working. So everybody, please open your notebook. So I will be showing you these command. What does these commands means basically? But uh, before showing you these, let's. So we can comment these commands before going there. We need to use another library, which is called matplotlib so let's try to understand what matplotlib is you can google matplotlib and this is another library okay uh, are you able to see my screen now please type yes if you are able to see my screen okay cool so this is the library that uh, we will be using the matplotlib for the visualization as you can see this library is used for the visualization purposes so we will be also using this library so first of all we need to import this library so we will be we will be using the pyplot of the matplotlib the pyplot component of the matplotlib library okay so we have to do the import matplotlib dot plt PYPLT as pyplot and as PLT. So we will be using it as PLT. That's the alias that we have given it in the code. So now what we need to do, first of all, we need to, first of all, what we will do, okay, hang on, just give me a second. Okay, so I'll sh I'll break down this code for you so that you can understand. First of all, we will draw a scatter plot. So how can we do that? PLT dot scatter. And we need to pass in the parameters that is X and Y. And then what we need to do PLT dot show. Why not just matplotlib? Why? because we are using the pyplot component only. We don't have to import the whole matplotlib. You can do that, it doesn't make a difference, but as we are using only the pyplot, that's why. So I'm trying to run it, it's just taking a little longer. I think it has been disconnected or what? Let's see. Let's wait for it to run. Mm 
there is some problem let me see let me restart the kernel Okay, let me try to run it again. Okay, so when we do scatter uh, plt dot scatter and we when I printed the y variable, its valued came up. You must have done something wrong with the file. You must have changed the value. There is something wrong with the file. I'll share the original file with you over an email or somehow. Don't worry about it. Let me uh, complete the session because we don't have much time. Let me complete the session, okay? I'll share the file with you. So this is what we got here. So we can see these values up here, but it's not clear, you know, that what is this X axis is for? What is this Y axis is for? whether it's a movie budget or whether it is you know it's not that much clear you have written a capital y where i have written capital y no it's a small y it's not capital y if i write capital y it will not work see it will not work if i write capital y okay so now what we have to do we have to add a title so this is the object that we have okay plt is our object and we are just going to type it as title okay then we're gonna give it a title as film cost versus global revenue global revenue if i do that let's see what what does it make what does it make any difference yeah it does make a difference so it gives it gave it a title now we want to label the x axis and we also want to label the y axis so let's do that plt dot x label is the command that we use to label the x axis okay so what we have to write up here we have on the x axis we have production budget production production budget in dollars so let's see does it make any difference it does cool now let's let's try to make a notation on the y axis as well so we'll say y label don't worry about the errors for now i'll share all the sheets with you don't worry about that for now at least let's focus on the learning right now we can sort those errors that's not a big deal and when you are doing programming there supposed to be errors that means you are doing programming that is the you know proof that you are exactly doing programming okay cool and 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 that and that holds the key keep trying <laughs> keep trying that's important right. yes that's what makes us go you know <laughs> okay so now on the y label we have like worldwide gross after putting this now it's not you know like there is a lot of space up here that we are able to see there is a lot of space on the x-axis there is a lot of space on the y-axis so we want to cover that space so there is a command that we use y lim we are limiting the values of y which values we want to showcase plt dot y lim So I'll just copy. I don't want to write it again. And also, we want to limit the x values as well. X lim. That's obviously going to be the same, just the values difference. On one side, we have approximately 3 billion. On the other side, we have 4.5, 450 million. Right. Now you can see the values which were, there was a difference. 
they are, it is to limit the values see if i comment it so can you see there is a difference it's not starting from the you know the plot is starting from here so there is a gap right so we are trying to remove that gap with the help of these x limit values just to make it you know look better so you can see the difference is it clear priyanshu okay now we want to we want to you know increase the size of this plot if you want to increase the size of this plot what should we do there is another command that we will use plt dot pig size bigger and we'll pass a variable which is fig size we'll pass the values as a, let's give it a value let's say 11 comma 7 or something let's see what we get so now we are getting a bigger graph and we are able to see you know a better picture i guess now if i increase the values again these are just the y and x axis values they are increasing so you can see it's giving us more clarity now where are most of the points are okay it's giving the more clarity now we want to see there is a uh, you can see there are a lot of points we can see but not clarity again so how can we make how can we get more clarity about this we can add alpha let's let's see let's see this uh, let's look at this chart first and once i add the code you can notice the difference what is the difference that you are able to see in the code so alpha value i'll say it to be like 0.3 oh gosh something is wrong alpha okay 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 my bad i'm very bad in typing guys pardon me for that okay now you can see here can you notice the difference the points are like more visible more clear to us you can see there is a cluster of more points. that means we have a lot of points we have movies which production budget is less than 1 million or sorry 100 million dollars in that region we have more movies in that and we have one of the outliers that is this movie which is avatar right so that that's about it that's about the visualization part i guess it's clear to everyone please type yeah alpha alpha is just to give it more clarity if i remove it let's say if i remove it let's see what difference does it makes let's try to remove it Okay, hold on. Uh oh, let me add this here. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're not getting the clarity for now. You're not able to get the density of the points where we have more points or less points. It is with the help of alpha, we are able to see yes, there are more points in this region. That is the purpose. Please mute yourself, whoever it is. So that is the role of alpha. I think it's clear, Dr. Benita. Okay, so this is clear, right? To everybody. So again, you can download this notebook. I did. Okay, now let's go back to the presentation again. Let's see what we can cover. Okay, now what we have done till now, we have understand the question, we have gathered the data, we have cleaned the data, we have explored the data. As you can see, the exploration we have done. Now the next part is modeling. Now we have to do the modeling of the data. Now let's see how can we do the modeling. I mean, can we even do it or not? Okay, so we are using a linear regression as a model. So what does the linear regression does basically on the X axis we have budget on the Y axis we have revenue. So if we have a value for like this, maybe this this is the point we have. If this is the value, let's say it's hundred million dollars, then what is the output I'm going to get? I'm getting I'm going to get the output over here. So my algorithm will try to learn from here. Let's see how it's going to learn what we are actually trying to do here. Hold on. So this is our target variable. And this is a this is the budget is the independent variable basically. So what we are trying to do up here, we are trying to fit a line, the best fit line. 
I was disconnected for longer time. It could get explored steps. Sure, sure, sure. I will, I will. You will get the recording, sir. You will get the recording. So what we want to do with linear regression, we want to fit the best fit line on our X and Y axis. That is going to give me the prediction. This is going to be my prediction. Let's say if I have some value for X over here, then what is the value for Y? I can check it by going to the Y intercept. So this is what I want to achieve, but there could be multiple lines, right? There could be multiple line. Let's see how what, what exactly this means basically. Let's see. So we have on X axis and we have one Y axis. What do we want to do? We want to fit a line on top of it, right? So what is this? What is this point is called? This point is the intercept where my line is starting. What is the value for Y? My line is starting from this point. I guess everybody have gone through the straight line equations when we were in high school. Or maybe somebody of you might have you know you have done it in uh, class 12th or 11th correct so this is the same thing is happening over here so the ten, value 10 is the intercept right everybody is clear with that that where the line is starting out that's the value if if x is zero what is the value for y that's it now what is this point this is the slope basically if there is two change in x what is the change in y with a per unit change or a, with some change in x what is the change we are getting in y so if two changes then there is one change in the y two unit change in x one unit change in y so that gives us the slope more steep it is going to be more the change we are going to see in our data now let's let's look at the equation what the equation we have by looking at this graph what is the equation we get now if you want to predict the y value how do we do that we have to make it like 1 upon 2x which is the slope into x which is going to be the input plus 10 which is going to be my intercept and this is the equation y is equals to how do we say it y is equals to mx plus c you might all of you might have seen this equation i'm pretty sure for that so now let's look at how two lines are going to differ how two lines are going to be differ from each other let's try to look at that okay so one line we have where the where we have no slope how that line is going to look like this is how the line is going to look like there is going to be no change only we have the intercept and when there is a when there is no intercept how the line is going to look like this is how the line is going to look like it is going to start from the zero point from the origin it's going to start from the origin i i hope i'm making sense to you all okay so what what is the, these these points which is the slope and the intercept these are called parameters in machine learning we call them parameters so we try to change them and do the hyper parameter tuning so We'll talk about that more maybe in the com coming sections because that's what machine learning and data science is all about changing the parameter and getting the best possible output. But for now, let's uh, let's take them to be in what is these are the parameters. Theta one and theta naught. Theta one is basically the slope and theta naught is the intercept. When you go to any of the machine learning books, you will see them in this form only. This was the simplest form that you might have seen y is equals to mx plus c but uh, over here there is a relation there is no relationship and when there is a relationship but in case in this this is the form that you might see in the most of the paper when you go and when you go online and read some research paper on machine learning then you will see these sort of notations so the theta naught theta theta naught is the intercept that we have and theta one is the slope and these two are our parameter for now let's consider them for now these are the two parameters that we have and also this is the more concrete form that you would see more scientific notational form that you might see somebody might call it like b naught you know b naught x b naught and b naught one in different papers it's notated in different form but most of the papers we see in this form 
H naught X is equal to H naught plus H H uh, H one and X. This is the form. If you want to get the value of this is the function basically. So this gives us the linear function that we are trying to fit onto a model. This is the linear function, which is theta naught plus theta one X. This is our function based upon which different line are going to be drawn. So we could have the multiple lines on it. Like see, there could be multiple lines, right? This could be one of the line. This could be one of the line. Just hold on. Yeah, so this could be one of the line. Uh oh, give me a second. So this could be one of the line. This could be one of the line. This could be one of the line. We could have different values of intercept. We could have different values of slope of the by changing different parameters. We could have different values. So how we are going to make sure that this is the best fitted line. How we are going to do that. There is a way that we can do it obviously. So let's say we have this uh, this uh, data set in which this is the line that we are getting. For all the input, this is the input and this is the output. This is the input. This is the output for let's say if we if we give input one, we are getting output one. If we give input two, we are getting output two. If we give input three, we are getting output three. So this is the best fitted line. And this very this is very easy, but this this generally doesn't happen when we go to real world when we solve real problem. We don't see this sort of you know this sort of data, a regularized data or a data in a continuous form. We don't see that. It doesn't happen that way. But let's for now let's consider this is the case. So this is the best fitted line, the which is the actual. Now what is the actual value here? The actual value is this. And what does our model have predicted? Our model have predicted the same value. Because this line is our prediction line. It's giving us the prediction and why we need this line. Maybe we have seen these points. We have seen these points and we are making the prediction. But in coming future, if we get new points, maybe we get a point here. Then what is going to be the output for that particular point? The output is going to come somewhere. Here. If we get a point somewhere here in future, when we deploy it to the production, this is going to be the output in the same way. But let's say let's consider a real world case where we have a data points just like this. This is a this is our real data point. This is a point. This is the point. This is the point. This is the point. And this is the line that we have predicted. This is a one of the line that we have predicted. We think that this is the best line for now at least. But there is a difference between what we have predicted and what actually is. What is the actual output? This is the actual output. And this is the point that we have predicted it to be. We are saying what we are saying with the help of this line that if we get an input at this point, this is going to be the output. But actually, that is not the case. The, the actual case is if we get the output up here, this is the sorry, if we get the input up here, this is going to be the output. And but we cannot fit it up here like right if we try to do that, if we try to fit all the points that is going not going to make it a linear line. That is not going to be a linear relation. So we'll we'll explore it later on. But let's for now let let's look at for now that this is the error that we have. This is the error that our model is uh, making. This is the mistake our model is making. Let's try to do draw a different line. Let's see that this is the line we have drawn. This was one of the line. This is the another line. These are the two lines that we have for now. Now let's see. Let's you can look at the lines and you can tell me which line is making more error. Please type yes if this line is making. Please type one if this line is making more error. Please type two if this line is making more error. Which line is the best one? If this is the line, that exactly. So it's very obvious. Exactly. That's great. Great. That means you are not getting bored and you are not feeling sleepy. <laughs> that is the proof. You all are awake. That's amazing. OK, so it's very evident. I mean, the difference is very huge between the point that we have predicted. We have predicted it to be here, but actually it is here. We predicted it to be here, but actually it is here. We have predicted it to be here, but actually it is there. So this is the difference. This is the error. We call them redundant values. Also, we call them redundant values. So we want to minimize this. That's what we want to do. We want to minimize this error. 
but first of all to minimize something we need to know that what is the actual value so that is what we are trying to find it out in this equation right this is the actual value this is what we have predicted this is this is this is the actual value this is what we have predicted this is the actual value this is what we have predicted okay now why we are taking squares of these values the reason being is because if i will not take the square then it will subtract from here and we'll get some different values so just to normalize the effect just to get a better intuition or better understanding we are squaring these values now what we gonna do now as i said these are the residuals so what we want to do we want to do the residual sums of square after this topic you can yes sir for sure for sure this is the last topic that i want to cover that's the last topic yeah so for this is the equation basically that i have for x naught x is equal to x uh, x naught sorry h naught x is equal to h naught plus h1 uh, sorry uh, theta naught plus theta theta 1 x so these are the value that we have to choose theta naught value and theta 1 value so how we can choose that we want to minimize these value we want to do the minimization so we have to take the summation of all the errors and we will try to minimize it we will draw different different lines and we will do the iteration based upon that and whoever the whoever line gives us the minimum error we will take that line to be the best fitted line so that's that's it for now that's it from my side for this session tomorrow we are going to do the apply we are going to apply this algorithm on this jupyter notebook and we'll try to see what exactly we get what is the line that we are getting for now if you have any questions any doubts you can ask please type out if you have any questions i will ask the team to share the recording with you okay uh, so nandesh can i chip in yes sir please uh well uh, it was excellent and uh, well beginning is half done uh, i know for certain we started off with around 100 um, uh, group members participants <laughs> but now uh, the number is a good 51 means half century it means great going and uh, 50 50 run before lunch is by all means a very good score thank you sir <laughs> and and data and data science in this new uh, reality as i call it and uh, in order to have very effective technological uh, leadership and these are all our leaders all these 51 to 100 participants yes and uh, this will uh, prepare uh, our uh, th 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 these uh, participants for uh, future leadership and uh, it will prepare them for post corona of this um pandemic so it's yes, good sir. very important and very interesting part being from panda to anaconda to python so i was just wondering whether we are in the wild or still you know because <laughs> python and anaconda and so panda and good thing being uh, in this world of today and because of complete lockdown pandas are also coming out Uh, only day before i was just um, you know coming across a story where pandas mm -hmm. are all also enjoying a good time so <laughs> python out here and data science out here and all around all across this is this has definitely given us a very good uh, environment one very small uh, point i was just remembering while you were just talking about this uh, regression so what happened was google was able to spot you know trends in swine flu epidemic right. roughly two weeks after this was uh, sometime in 2009 or 2011 it was okay. so uh -huh. but it was very important because they were in a in a position on way back in 2009 it was 
so right. google was and why it was just trying to epidemic so they were uh-huh. tracking the progress of epidemic right, and sir. because people were you know they, they were uh, asking for and keywords uh, giving uh, you know related to flu related topics and they were uh-huh. searching so we can imagine 11 years down the line how right. far have we traversed we have better you know <laughs> Uh, all right, these sir. techniques tools databases very very effective so maybe right, we can use of all those so from health care to this to business opportunities new are things all around right, all sir. across so very right, very good thank you so much thank and you, uh, maybe uh, tomorrow again we will be joining you what time is this 11 o'clock yes sir 11 o'clock 11 to yeah. 11:30 is my one program and today i i, I just forgot i missed uh-huh. out on one very important fikis uh, program on mm-hmm. uh, leadership after this corona this fikis uh, daily program so yours okay. was so enticing so <laughs> and engrossing that i i, I just glued to uh, this program and i am very happy can i get a few comments if a few people can uh, could just share their thoughts as to how brilika and usark and sure. all our uh, yoga into this om umesh rajdeep and everybody sure. they have chipped in with this okay can, can, sure. can they just give their comment i'll be very happy to get those comments sure sir sure please please we'd love to hear that why is there complete silence uh, if anybody wants to give comment you can unmute yourself and you can speak out i think everybody is muted so that could be the reason they are typing it ah out. please ask them please, please 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 ask them to unmute maybe 5 minutes of this feedback this will definitely help us you know right, and sir, we right. can furthermore we, we can refine so they they must speak out they they, they must speak if they have anything with regard to project and this thing and newer uh, this thing so maybe we can have it please right. unmute 5 minutes 5 minutes session no yes yes speak up hello yes please go on yeah speak up yeah hi i am alamkant uh, i have uh, join this uh, workshop it is very informative and uh, it will definitely uh, take us to a uh, very good platform to initiate this uh, data engineering and uh, data mining uh, sort of thing and it will be definitely help us in our further uh, assignments great great sir 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 mr pant what you can do uh, where are you based presently i am based at dehradun i am working with the drdo laboratory it is instruments research and development establishment at uh, raipur ah thank you thank you so much mr pal what can happen is if you could also kindly spread this word around that we are uh, usar can prilika is coming with many such program in fact yeah. tomorrow mr yogin is coming with the cyber security many many such things are happening so maybe you can be our because it's a family now it it is data science yeah. this computing intelligent fraternity so we can yeah. spread this word around because i know there is remorse there is sadness around and this thing possibly through this thing through these very important inputs we can not only serve the community but we can possibly make them more positive you know they can That's have right a positive uh, outlook yes yes of course, thank sir. you we, thank you we, sir. right sir thanks very much Good afternoon, sir. This is uh, Dr. Ramini Swarna, and I'm calling you from Delhi. And I'm working as an assistant professor. I love Python, and uh, you know, after uh, attending this one session today, I think uh, I'm really uh, amazed to find out that yes, within one and a half hour, we were able to cover so much. And uh, in five days, I'm just thinking that. Uh, the idea that was put forth from your side that we should start looking for some projects also on the manner in which this gave out the regression 
and the kind of data that is available to us right now for corona some of us can join up immediately and we can start working on these regression models also sir so i really enjoyed it and i appreciate uh, yogi sir uh, yogendra singh negi sir for circulating the offer flyers for this particular uh, sessions for us sir. so i really appreciate the entire team and thank you uh, thanks a lot also sir from my side oh very very nice you, you know these inputs are very important for us because from delhi other places and knowledge or the, the computing it has no boundaries so it is so very nice that when we have very learned you know participants from all around all across and they can chip in with their inputs they can tell us as to how to go about we can develop good projects in fact credit goes to nandesh for making it so very exciting very very nice so yeah, uh, in a way we can, we can and thank you thank you so much any any other comment from uh, any participant it would be very very helpful some participant yeah. is any uh, any anyone from these uh, hill districts of uttarakhand anybody has anything to say i think sir they are typing out you know their feedback in the, okay. in the chat window they are typing it out okay okay oh that would be fantastic yes, so sir, yes. thank you thank you very much nandesh thank you thank very you. much yogen om umesh and rajdeep you know, sir. so it it has been splendid so we going to meet up tomorrow 11 o'clock sure sir. all right, right sir. thank you thank, thank you. you have a good day thank you sir bye bye